two promiscuity. Yes. Another big evil. Okay. And it has an impact, for example, the impact it has on a woman is greater than the impact it has on a, uh, on a man. Psychologically. In Islam, it's the same. A man who uh, has sex outside of marriage and a woman, the punishment is the same. There's no differentiation between she's a man or a woman. However, psychologically, and when it comes to pair bonding, because women release oxytocin when they're pair bonding, usually when they're giving birth and they're suckling, yeah? So when it comes to pair bonding, when a woman is being, and I talk about this a lot, when a woman, for example, a woman needs security, she needs reassurance, she needs to be protected. It's as simple as that. They can, I don't know, some feminists will come and say, no, I'm sorry, biologically you're ring, unless you want to come and do one-on-one -on -one with me. But if you're, but there's exceptions to the rule. There's some MMA ones might knock me out. Down, exactly. Down. So there's exceptions to the rule. But the point is what? Islam gives great emphasis to the care of women. Great emphasis. For example, for her, her well-being, her, for her to be protected. Because at the end of the day, when a woman is getting into a relationship, a man can easily manipulate. Of course, there's women that can manipulate men as well. But a few sweet words, that's the reason why women fall for what they hear. And we fall for what we see. That's why women wear makeup and men lie. Yeah? So that's why Allah, God Almighty, has told us how to deal with this situation. That's why I talk about this. If I'm interested in a woman, I have to, it has to be, intentions has to be for the right reasons. Yeah. Marriage. Number two, I have to speak to her father. Number two, I have to give her a dowry. Number three, I have to announce the marriage. Number four, when I marry her, I need to be provided for her. Electric bill, gas, council tax, etc. I have to pay for everything. So a woman has to be taken care of. Yes, because yes. she is well. delicate. Okay, well, I just I, go back to the point. But this is very important well, though, just to touch upon the sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because the breakdown of the family unit causes chaos. Yeah? And that's why you have so many single mothers because they are deadbeat dads. They, then this causes a ripple effect on society because the studies that show how a child is affected growing up in, with a single mother household, and by the way, I'm not blaming the single mothers. I'm yeah. saying that that's the reality because the kids live with the mother. So you look at society, a crippling, damaging, catastrophic kids in society. Then we see the ripple effect of this by crime rates. Yeah? Like for a child who's brought in a single mother household, more likely to be sexually assaulted, more likely to do, uh, drop out of school, more likely to end up in prison. And then you see this ripple effect. So do you see why Islam is so against it? Like it's in the sense where it's prevention is better than cure. Do things the right way and you see the fruits in society. Yes, I mean, you don't necessarily need Islam. You need Islam 100%. You policy. need, there's nothing else you need. Give me another if, example. If we, well, if we agree that social conservatism is the way forward, and for arguments say, yeah. I mean, couldn't you say that you can be a social conservative without following the doc, without following Islam? Like what? Tell me, tell me another well, world, world view or, or a way of life or a, a system hmm. that has. Well, I mean, of course, Islam is unique, so it's impossible to exactly. say. Um, but like, well, we're talking about family values. Yes. Uh, there are other. You can be atheist, but still uphold family values. How? Because you you have subjective morality. And if it's subjective, it changes. Like for example, somebody who's an atheist cannot come and tell me why incest is intrinsically wrong. He cannot. He cannot come and tell me incest is wrong. Why is it wrong, sir? He he's got no grounds to... Do you, get, do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, some people will come and say, oh, we don't need Islam to tell me. There was one actually, one fool. I call him a fool, yeah? Is it, maybe he's probably watching this. You're a fool if you're watching this, yeah? He would come and say, I don't know the Islam. I don't need Islam. Because in the Quran, Allah tells you that the people who you can marry and the people you can't marry. So he was laughing. He was like, ha, 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 look at this. Islam is telling us uh, that uh, like, it's a no-brainer. Of course, I'm not going to bury my mother. And he's like, really? Well, what about incest? They're, they're promoting incest now. Do you see it? Islam deals with real life issues and it has those boundaries and protocols in place to protect you as a human being. And the main thing of Islam is what? to free yourself from the enslavement of society to the enslavement of God. This is what is so fundamental about That's Islam. That's interesting. So you say you enslave yourself to God. Yes, I before was enslaved by my society. Now I'm enslaved to God and I have my true freedom. So do we have any free will? F okay, free will and being enslaved is two separate things. We believe in Islam, we're compatibilists, meaning we believe in free will and we believe that God Almighty also knows what we're going to do. How that works together, I don't know. But what I do know is the following, that God is the all-knowing, therefore he would know every action that I do. Number two, this doesn't mean just because he knows he makes me do it, I have a free will. How do they work together? I don't know. I have faith. That specific aspect, I have faith because it's outside my... This is where, as an atheist, I very much struggle to believe in a God. If I can't even comprehend it, 
Why should I enslave myself to this being? True, but you need to understand something. Perley, yeah? Yeah, a Perry. Pe Perry, it's all right. Don't worry about it. No, no, it's, it's I fine. Didn't, it's I, fine. I didn't, forgive me. No, no, it's, it's all right. Uh, what was it? Perry. Perry. I'm very yeah. bad with names, by the way. No, it's all right. You see that on my videos. Ali, Ali, right, yeah. I actually done a video about one rapper. Yes. And that wasn't oh. even his name. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, and my friend was like, bro, I'm like, yeah, he's like, you know, that's not him. I put in the thumbnail. I was like, I don't know what's his name, bro. I'm, I'm really bad. I just, wait, what was his name? Do you remember? Like, um, ads, young ads, ads, yeah, yeah. And I got another ads and I put him, he's like, that's not him. I was like, oh, bloody hell. Anyways, so the question was, um, yeah, when it comes, now look, in Islam, there is a lot of things that make sense. For example, I know God is one and unique, his attributes. I can prove that. I have evidence to prove that. We've had a debate about contingency. We had it with your friends, we, yeah? We had, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. now there is some things that mm. we do not know about God. For example, what's God's essence? Mm. How does free will work? Now, for me to be arrogant about it and be like, no, I need to know everything. No, that's arrogance. We say, we submit our way. Why do you think when we pray, put our head on the floor? To show our humbleness and be like, I don't know much. I'm limited. Bro, there's limited things like, do you know your brain does blood tests? It actually, like, if it notices that you've ate something that is not good, it sends a signal for your stomach to vomit it out. This is a system. It's a system. If there's a system, there's a system set up. If there's a pattern, there's someone that designed it. So we just say, there are some things we don't know. Do you think there's any jump there? So you're saying there's a pattern, someone designed it. Yes. Do you think there's any jump? No, I'm not jumping at all. This, I think I'm walking quite straight. Okay. I think the atheists are jumping. Okay, so where do you think the atheists fall down? I think with the atheists, depends what kind of atheists. There are atheists who are sincere, there are atheists who are not sincere. There are those who are confused. But the, the point is this. No atheist can come and disprove God to me. None of them. And now that's not because Ali's being arrogant. No, it's not about me. It's simple, logical, rational, common sense. Yes? It's the inference of the best explanation. I can prove many, many ways that God Almighty exists. What atheists do is the following. And by the way, I believe atheists believe in a God. They just name it something else. Who created this? Evolution, Mother Nature. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Evolution and Mother Nature. The point is what? You're ascribing what credit, the credit that God deserves to cre the creation. Evolution. What does evolution? Is evolution a being? Is it a somebody? What is evolution? So we're saying blind processes can't give rise to such phenomena, such uh, uh, design. Okay, why do you rule that out as a possibility? Because, if, for example, the process of evolution. Okay, for example, if we talk about energy, does energy have consciousness? Does it have a will? No, it doesn't. So we're saying that, for example, that if the, the universe began to exist, something willed it. It cannot be like it gave rise to itself. That's why I used to argue from contingency. It cannot have given rise to itself because it doesn't make sense. Did it come from nothing or did it create itself? Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, so I, I do. I, I sometimes wonder though, this idea something came before the universe. Is it, is it flawed? Because that implies there was some time, time exactly. line, but time didn't even exist. But then what the existed before that thing? Well, I, this is the great question. I, I, exactly. If time didn't exist, then to even speak of a before seems to be Exactly, but what we, what we say before is the necessary being, which is God Almighty, who's always existed, who gave rise. We're not, because otherwise you have the fallacy of infinite regress, which is, if there was a before the universe, okay, then what's before that universe? And what's before that universe? And it just goes on. And the interesting question is, what do we mean by before? Because if there's no such thing as time, well, then you're before in, in, the universe, I mean, it's so difficult because we're true. talking with Okay, these but, then, but then you're inferring infinity. And we say there is no infinite in the real world. Infinite doesn't exist in the real world. I, I just find the whole thing a, a wonderful mystery, although I can... It's a mystery, but like, look, I don't see it like that. I see yeah. it very logical, rationally, that number one, I know that there has to be an all-powerful being. And there's evidence to that, because we know that it cannot come from nothing. Mm. We know that it could have not created itself, because it's an oxymoron. Therefore, we say that there must have been an all-powerful being that gave rise to it. We use, look, let me tell you something with atheists. They use their rationality and logic day to day. But when it comes to God, they just go, it's just as if they're just like, I'm going to be extreme skeptic. It's like when you cross the road, you look left and you look right. Logical. When you wake up in the morning, you don't say, maybe I'm in the matrix. Maybe I'm in Mars. Maybe I'm in the moon. No, you wake up and say, I'm going to go downstairs, go to my toaster, have my favorite breakfast. Mm. You have made those assumptions that they are already there. Why? Because you know the night before they were there. 
if you go to your fridge and see a rabbit, you're not going to be like, hi, let me get cheese. No, you're going to be like, what the flipping hell is a rabbit doing in my fridge? Do you get it? It's because it's logically, it shouldn't be there. If you come home and you see your plate smashed on the floor, you're not going to come and say, hmm, it was a blue dragon who ran through my house and smashed everything. You're going to say, well, let me see, was the window open? Might be the wind. Oh, there was an earthquake. Might be the earthquake. Oh, it's my cat. Do you see how you come to logical conclusions? You never go to the absurd by seeing, oh, it must have been a blue cow who flew from Mars. You don't do that. Why? Because it's absurd. What do you do? You go to the explanation, which is what? Plausibilities. My kitten, the cat, the, the door, earthquake. And then you come to the conclusion that you had a wife that was angry that was smashing the plates. So that's another possibility. So do you see it? It's these. But what atheists do is when we come to the universe and we say, let's use our logic and rationality, they say, no, today we're going to be extreme skeptic. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And they're like, yeah, but why can it not be aliens? And there's called something called, uh, hi, um, there's a, there was a study done by a scientist. He actually believes that aliens created us. I forgot the word, there's a word oh, for it. Cy he, Cy I think he didn't have much evidence. N no, no, but no. he actually, no, 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 but he was an actual scientist right. that he believed that there is intelligence and instead of seeing God, he goes aliens. Well, sir, who the flipping hell created aliens? It all boils down to that. And, and like I said before, I have evidence to my claim. Well, look, it's, a, it's an interesting question. I, I agreed to meet some friends of mine here. So, but thank you very much. Thank you. It was good talking to you. It's a pleasure, man. Yeah. Always. Uh, have a good Look day. Look after yourself. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.